Hello. I hope you came dressed nice because we are here to celebrate the previous lives of four beautiful individuals. They will be going through a lovely experience, a game called Dark Souls, known entirely for its joy, calmness, satisfaction, good vibes, many plentiful save areas, and <laughs> absolutely zero bits of stress. My name is Gabe Hicks. And today, and for a few sessions, I will be your dreadlord. No, it's not just because I have dreadlocks, but that is in fact part of it. <laughs> we are here on the Saving Throw channel, going to be running through the Dark Souls tabletop game. I feel like I am socially obligated to say that I did in fact, oh, it's a, it's a full moon tomorrow. This is a little <gasps> weird. Um, I am socially obligated to say that I worked on this game. And I'm very happy to say it because I got to make some messed up things that I am now reasonably able to put this party through. Now, if you see me on anything else, I play a very, eh, I play a fairly friendly game master. I'm not gonna do that here because this game has plenty of rules that when a party dies, they just go back somewhere else. So I am going to pound them into ruby dust, but that's <laughs> enough about me. Let's go around and introduce the rest of this lovely, yeah, y'all didn't know I was gonna be all up like this. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, yeah. that's, that's, that's what this game is. I'm a little like. scared. You oh know God. what? Let's start with you, Scared. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Scared. I'm also EJ. I'm also, that's one big egg in chat. And I'm also that, or uh, several big eggs on Twitter. And I'm very happy and also scared to be here. <laughs> yes, that's what I aim for in life. Now, Drag. Hi, who said, um, who said did, were you the one that said, oh boy? <laughs> yep. If it's the right answer, okay. <laughs> Oh boy. Um, hi, I'm Drake called Draconics. So you see they pronouns. Um, I'm Draconics in, on Twitter and Twitch. Um, and I'm also excited, but also very scared to be here. Oh, don't be. Eh, you should. <laughs> you know what? Let's go down to someone who's not entirely Eric, but mostly Eric. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Eric, and contractually, Saving Throw has to put me in at least 15 shows a year. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, that's a lot. Oh my god. I know. Are you sleep? I mean not much. You will. <laughs> that was a, that was like a death reference, but it sounds like I I'm got giving it. you I, a break. Yeah. No, I I, 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 I no, it, I I yeah. yeah sleep just, with the fishes. I got it. I got <laughs> it. I ain't just yeah. eat it with you. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you. <laughs> oh, was that it? Was it just the, okay? Well, yeah. The, I, thank I, you, don't know. I don't know. And and a round of applause. Bravo. Yes, it's a pun. <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get that out now before okay, the rest okay. of you destroy everything that I plan for. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Bravo. Oh, I'm so terrified. Um, I am the Monty Hall in chat. Um, so I'm not using my uh regular account, but I'll be in chat as the Monty Hall. That's my channel with me and my friend Nikki, as well as my lovely friend EJ, who is joining me today. Hopefully, we won't die. I'm a little scared. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be fine. I think we're gonna be fine. They hide Ooh. around the corners and get you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I'm ready. I have a bunch of sounds from the Dark Souls I'm games. So excited. So right off the bat, uh just so all of you know watching, the first session of this and probably the second session are going to be involved with character creation. So I am going to help these artists sculpt the characters that they want to throw into a world of suffering and joy joy that's a good one suffering and joy because those go together so we're going to be going through some of the different rules some of the different rolling charts some of the different bits of character creation with classes because even though this does use a very 5e based system there's a lot of twists and turns that are fairly different now i'm going to ask you right off the bat do any of you have character concepts in mind? Uh, but that that one big egg, you go last. <laughs> <laughs> you go last. I, and you go. You know. You know what. You know what you do. Okay. You know what you do. I. Bro, I oh, yeah. Drac, you do oh. track. No, 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 no. You, you spoke first. Okay. Oh, um, <laughs> the idea I had, I, I threw this at um, Bravo and EJ, and they kind of like I said it as a joke at first, and I was like. Unless, so I'm gonna go with it. Um, I already have a name in mind and everything. 
So his name is Stitches, and what? he is Patch's older brother. Interesting. <laughs> that's all I have right now. <laughs> no, that's enough. That's enough. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, now, now I'm gonna throw it at Bravo. Oh. Okay. Um. I had a character concept of a um, uh, kind of a spooky, um, elegant uh, sorceress woman who achieved her magic by uh, nefarious means. Um. She's not a huge fan of stitches. I. I. I really. I, I'm. Jack and I have never played a rival. A uh, rivalry. So I yeah. think we're gonna like. <laughs> jump in on that but yeah very fun gothic horror scary spooky also mm. hot but of course that <laughs> comes with the territory obviously don't mock me i'm just agreeing with you you terrify me i'm getting on game's bad side before this yeah <laughs> i'm here for a good Please, it makes it easier, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Eric, do you have anything that is, or, or or did you also use the character creator and then decide to just drag everything all in one direction? I I had like a couple of concepts that kind of popped in my head, but the one that was the strongest is the idea of like probably a cleric, like because I like the idea mm. of someone who who's like has this power but doesn't understand where it's from and like is seeking to like figure out like. A, what I'm doing here, why I can do these miracles, and what's going on. I like that idea. Neat. Okay. Very cool. And are you ready? Egg. <laughs> are you ready? You want to hear it? <laughs> so excited. So I actually, mine is very well thought out. Uh, I'm gonna play a little guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna play a little guy, and I believe uh, I will have been created by uh, whatever Bravo's character is. So they're a very powerful sorcer sorceress. So you know, I'll just—they just made a little guy sometime, and that little guy's gonna be me. What's a little blood magic? Come on. Yeah, you know, you, you want to know my class? You want to know like my my ideals, my virtue? No, I'm a little guy for now. <laughs> this big. Yep. <laughs> so I'm going to be a little bit of a narrator for all of you. And as we go through this learn to play, I'm going to read out some snippets for you. Uh, this one pair, well, I'm going to start with the two lower paragraphs, but there's one part in particular that I really like. Uh, so this is using a lot of the 5e e rules. There are no languages in this game. In the world of Dark Souls, it is pretty much everyone speaking the same language. And that is really the only notion that we really needed here. There's also no alignments because... All of you are already very morally gray anyways, so there is no way we were going to put that on you when you can <laughs> easily just punch an NPC that turns into a demon. Um, this paragraph right here, though, this is very important for all of you who want to play the Dark Souls game and for these four. Dark Souls is a world of moral ambiguity and of moral strangeness. Are the unkindled good as they hack their way through endless enemies to relight a flame? Is the world not better dead? Does Yorm deserve to die? For all its magic and its mystery, the world of Lothric is intensely human, and human decisions can't be neatly divided. That part doesn't. That's it's, that's that's less important. I just wanted to ask if is the world not better dead? Because these four are going to answer that question for us Ooh. very quickly. Ooh. So there's five main steps to the character creation in the Dark Souls tabletop game. One. Decide on a concept for your character, which these four have done. <laughs> All of us equally. They're, they're, they're concepts. <laughs> uh, two, I promise that this criticism is like 80% joking. I'm saying this to the people watching, not to you four. I, you four and the 20%? That, no, it's 20%. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> choose randomly to determine your backstory and last memory. Number three. Select your origin. This is a part where the Dark Souls tabletop game is very different than some other 5e systems. The origin that you pick, which is comparable to like your background, that is actually what's going to decide your attributes. So your strength will be decided by your origin, your dexterity oh. by your origin, your constitution by your origin. It's the Dark Souls way of putting together a starting build. So I'm very excited to see what the little lad chooses. Oh, so me too. Lad. Me too. I'm excited too. And I, I <laughs> who knows what's gonna happen? 
I, I have I, I have a bet on that one. Then the fourth part is selecting your class. This gives you your skills, class abilities, and starting equipment, something I'm sure many of you are very familiar with. And the last part is get playing. We're not going to say enjoy because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't. <laughs> well, I do, but I don't control that. But you get to decide your enjoyment. So the first thing that I need you all to do, I need you to roll a d20 for me, and then I'm going to go around the table and ask each of you what you got. What they are going to be doing is the backstories, memories, and the character drives. You can either pick one from a chart or there is a D20 chart for each of those things. It helps to define what these people are doing. It helps to define what they want. And it's a great way to just do character creation because even if you already have a concept, these aren't things that necessarily are going to change how you look, how you react, but it is just little bits of little bits of narrative to help build your character in an even more interesting way because all of these characters are the unkindled at one point they were dead long cosigned to the grave and now they're not but they don't know how or why our fun is that we're going to be able to find that out later on as we go through the story and define it and put them through trials of self growth is that what they call it these days? Yep, the kids quote it now. Yeah, it's in the book. It's in the book, and you can't prove me it's not there yet. <laughs> you can't prove it's not there. So let's start with Drac. What did you roll? I rolled a two. Two, beautiful. And this is backstories. Who was your character before they awoke at the bonfire? What had they done? What did they escape? And you said a two. Yeah. Great. Uh oh. Oh. This is, no, it's fine. <laughs> You're a lowly murderer. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Hanged in ages past and forgotten about. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that adds up, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Aww. So, that are uh, indeed bravo. Aww. What did you roll? I rolled a 17. 17. Ew, I don't like that. That's fitting. <laughs> An alchemist was what they called you. All you cared for was the perfect combination of substances achieving the ideal effect. <gasps> the dice tell the story, man. Oh my god, that's so perfect. <laughs> you know what? We're going to let them have their joy now, and then we are going <laughs> to have our fun later. Are all of you, not, not the people watching, you guys just get to enjoy, are all of you players writing these numbers down? Yes. Okay. I'm going to do that now. Now I am. Now Thank, I am. You. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate Thank you. you. Uh, Eric, what did you roll? I rolled a nine. Nine. I promise these reactions are uh, not on purpose. A killer for hire is an ugly name for an ugly job. But yeah. it was your ugly job, and you were good at it. And I will be sending you all of these again later just so you have them. But that's why I see you write down the numbers. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I wrote everything else. I'll forget. I'll forget <laughs> and I'll make them up. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will never lie to you about stuff like this. <laughs> now, now, my my favorite character and uh, EJ, what I'm did ready. you roll? A one. I rolled a nat one. First roll of the game. You sought to become the great lord of Lothric by any means. You failed. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I, li I, I like the wiggle room I have with this one. I can play yeah. with this. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why a little... Little guy, little... big ambition. I love right. that. That's, that's so boss baby right there. He's a boss baby. <laughs> wow. I don't think that baby. the boss baby should be in Lothric. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. Tell Alec Baldwin that. Um, dear Alec Baldwin, <laughs> have you ever played Dark Souls? If not, you should. <laughs> if you would ever like to run a... Well, excuse me. I would not put that on you. If you would ever like to play in a Boss Baby-themed Dark Souls oh tabletop session, please let me know. And let <laughs> Saving Throw know. Because, hey... So memories. Um, it wouldn't be the weirdest thing we've done on this channel. Mm. See, it sounds really fun. I love Boss but Baby. But Eric, 
you had to say that, so now it feels like a personal challenge. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Don't kill boss, baby. Ah, hey. <laughs> Don't do it. Memories. <laughs> How much do you remember of your past life? What remains in your mind not stripped from you as the possibility of true death was stripped from you? The following tables contains possible last memories your unkindled might possess, lodged irrecoverably in their minds. The unkindled tend to remember little of their lives before, though it's seldom entirely ripped from their recollection. Some remember everything, every last moment of their lives before. As with determining your backstory, you can randomly determine a last memory. Don't the don't don't read the last part. It says that you get to choose. I'm taking that. I'm taking that agency away. Uh. I'm, I'm, <laughs> unless unless you come to me later, and be like Gabe. I wanted. To, I I will. But this is for the people, people. <laughs> and me, because you're gonna bully my creatures later, and I need this. Uh. <laughs> oh, fair. Yeah. So we're gonna go opposite. EJ, what'd you get? Yep. Uh, the, yep. On the swap. Ten. Ten. Beautiful. One of your last memories is a flame blossoming into life somewhere far ahead of you, flickering in the dark. Mm. Eric, what did you roll? I got an eleven. An eleven. Fitting. The screams and chaos of a bandit raid running, and arrows flickering past you. Ooh. Bravo. Five. A roaring explosion, oh. sudden blazing heat, sprays of stone, and then darkness. I'm a bad alchemist. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and then Drac. I wrote a one. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah I rolled a one and a two. Let's go. Oh my gosh! I don't a think man... he's help killing us, but he's getting it from this deck. From oh, this deck. oh yeah, 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 yeah. More of this. <laughs> <laughs> a man stands over you with a bloody knife, laughing, <gasps> laughing, and laughing. Oh, it was Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> Dreadmaster? You can't prove that. <laughs> There's no proof. Not saying I read that on one already. <laughs> Not, I don't know where that came from. Wow. So last but not least, your drives. You are dead. But not quite. You're alive, but not truly. The unkindled, the unkindled are an anomaly. Some believe them to be the only means of saving Lothric and the world from ever encroaching darkness. I don't believe that. Uh, others insist they are abomination, the cause of the suffering slowly drowning the world. Amidst this onslaught of theology of praise and hatred, you pick up your sword or talisman. But why? What drives you on? Why? when you are sure to suffer so much pain and rejection. <sighs> Sorry, that part just always gets me. Do you gather your memories each time you awaken beside the bonfire and try once more to bring light into the darkness? So, Eric, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you first. What is your role? I roll the natural 20. Natural <gasps> 20. Amazing, amazing, amazing. A drive of yours is to achieve redemption. You know the darkness in your past lives. Perhaps you seek to cleanse yourself. Oh, <gasps> very thematic. That is so fitting. Oh my gosh, how exciting. Now, Drac, please. Guess what? No, don't say uh, it. I wrote the night one again. Oh. Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. You drive, your drive is to become the Lord of Cinder. No matter the cost Ooh. of you, or the world. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like, I that, like that. <laughs> <laughs> EJ. 10. 10. Your drive is to extinguish the first flame forever. The progenitor flame, the flame that brings life and also is responsible for so much that is happening here, which totally isn't in contrast to Drax drive, not at all. 
Oh, this is gonna be no, so no, juicy. No. no, no. Luckily, I'm entirely a little mucus goblin boy, so putting out a fire so is probably pretty easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> probably mm -hmm. pretty easy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, someone said, what's betting? That's the only not 20 of the game. And oh, God. Uh, bravo, oh, no. please. <laughs> 15. 15. To see Lothric once again filled with life. Aww. Well, that's cute. Aww. Yeah, that's the sweetest thing that we're going to hear. It doesn't say what kind of life. You just hear more little guys. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. <laughs> no. Eric? You're a genius. I am the first of many. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the reasons that these drives, memories, and backstories are mechanically useful in this game is because during the play, you can actually invoke them. You can call upon them in relation to the narrative and gain a bonus. If there is a moment you feel like applies to your backstory, your drive, or your memory, you can invoke it. And I will give you a reminder of these going down the line. Invoking your memory allows you to roll with advantage on one check of your choice. Invoking your backstory allows you to roll with advantage on one saving throw of your choice. Invoking your drive allows you to re-roll one failed check or saving throw of any kind. That is a value of these memories, backstories, and drives that you have. And you can invoke one of those once per long rest. Be creative. Figure out ways to bring that element into the moment. If you see a foe ahead of you that is blocking your way, Drac, and you know, you know you need to become the Lord of Cinder to slay them down, that's a great way to invoke your drive. EJ, if you, uh... <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I just want to put an end to this silly little world, that's my drive. <laughs> I was, I mean, I was going to say you were upset about failing to become the Lord of Lothric. So that, but yes, yes, your, yours is fitting as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there, there I are feel plenty the first of... time, if I can't be Lord, no one can. That's the whole, that's the, that's the long and short of it. That is so terrifying. And I think it's even more terrifying that you're not some like huge, scary monster, but that you're just a little guy. You should be scared. <laughs> what have I done? This is weird. I'm so gay. Okay. <laughs> this is weird. You just you spent so long asking if you could, you didn't ask if you should mm, make little guys. Absolutely right. That's too, I'm, too, I'm too far in now. I'm really yeah, shocked. You love that... the little guys. You guys love the little guys. How how is it that Eric is the like least unhinged of this group? <laughs> I I'll be honest. I knew it would be unhinged with EJ and Bravo. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, that's just track, he invited me. <laughs> that's yeah, just the dice. That's just the dice making me have to be like a person. <laughs> a person. I respect that. I respect Eric is that. Disappointed he can't be a little guy too. Yeah. Well, we can't all be little guys. What a shame. <laughs> uh, so the boss baby campaign. I'll put in a boss baby monster here. No, that'd be so scary. I would be. I would not say no. <laughs> Except to that. it's going to be like twelve feet tall in a suit. It it's basically a bald demon because I, <laughs> I, I it's I just the end of Akira. It's just yes. Literally. I can't. I can't socially in an acceptable way make you fight a baby That's but i can true. make you fight something that is large and totally hairless and cries a lot Ooh. <laughs> it's, got, evil like, style. it's like, got like six legs uh, oh. four rows of teeth 18 nice. now nah, 19 fingers it has to have an odd number so it's not symmetrical that makes it worse. Kind. That makes it yeah. a lot worse. One of them just splits at the end. And you know what? I'll <laughs> I'll like make its toes elongated so it like walks around almost like crab like, shifting from Ooh. left to right. I'm I'm down for this. I'm ready to Let's draw go. that right now. That sounds. Like I was gonna ask you. Like... <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? It's gonna curse <laughs> me in my dreams in the most beautiful way. Okay, what you is... have not seen. You have not seen Broadway's like pin chest boards. What? No, I have a Pinterest board. I'm ready. Uh, yeah, you honestly. Yeah. 
<laughs> what have I agreed to? Okay, I'm ready. Okay, if you're not, we're not you're trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with us. You're trapped in here with us. <laughs> and so there, there is, there is like kind of a baby in the FromSoft games, <laughs> kind of. But like, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because they never call it a baby, they get away with it. I can't be like sitting here. That's that is the blessing and curse of tabletop games. Hmm. If I'm like and a crying, grotesque, stinky, <laughs> hairless creature crawls out towards you. Wow. Um, <laughs> as soon as someone asks, okay, here's here's the plan. Here's the plan. Mm -hmm. None of you can ask if it's a baby, and we get away mm -hmm. with it. Okay. We all mm -hmm. lost our memories of what a baby is. Exactly. So <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 Cool. That goes for everyone in chat. Yeah, I I need mm -hmm. confirmation that if it if it crawls like a baby and it cries like a baby, we're not gonna call it a baby. Mm -hmm. We're gonna call it a little guy. No. Oh, <laughs> are you a baby? <laughs> are we gonna fight baby. EJ? <laughs> no. EJ is the yeah yeah. Guy. I'll be a baby. I'll be a baby. <laughs> that way I, I can scream cry all the time. I hate this. <laughs> we're gonna God. go into origins. <laughs> What have I done? <laughs> so there are four origins in the Dark Souls tabletop game. Chat, you're the worst. You're the worst. You had one job. You had one job. And, <laughs> and you, you, you know what? That's fair. I respect that. There are four origins, and these determine your initial stats. They help give an idea of the class you're most likely to excel at, but you can pick an origin that has terrible stats for whatever class you pick, because that's a lot of the time how people play Dark Souls game. That's why speedruns exist. They run through in a loincloth with a stick and they still win. I don't understand those people. Amazing. You are literally alien anomalies to me. I... Amazing. <sighs> so there are four different classes. Origins, excuse me. I got ahead of myself. Look at that. There is the Brute. Big and strong. You're used to enduring pain and continuing to push on. Push forward, push through. There's nothing out there, no creature lurking in the darkness you're unable to defeat. The strength of your sword, arm, that was a weird pause, is all that matters. Brutes are good at taking damage. You can protect the party, drawing the enemy's ire. Dealing out damage. You're strong and deadly. With the right weapons, you're unstoppable. You would make an excellent knight, mercenary, or warrior. Then there's the fencer. This is totally not a dex build. Uh, constantly moving. Your blade is a flowing line of silver. You're a deadly combatant. You are the master of the blade, of the parry, and the repost. There is nothing you know and love more than the relentless surge of battle. You're always ready to duel, and no foe is too large or too deadly for you. I hate that I read the words brutish little guy and... It's going to pop me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fencers are good at dealing damage. You're talented with multiple weapons, and you're a formidable opponent. Keeping out of harm's way, you're swift and able to dodge even the most accurate of blows. You make an excellent assassin, thief, and herald. The jack of all trades. You're skilled at whatever you turn your hand to. You might not be the finest fighter, but you're more than capable of gutting a demon if given the chance. You might not be the most scholarly of people. Hey, no. I, I didn't, I didn't, I'm looking at a camera. You can't <laughs> tell who I'm looking at. But you can make your prayers heard or your spells work. You're capable of anything. And those who underestimate you end up regretting it. Everything. That's what they're good at. Everything, it says that. That's literally in the book. You're capable of turning your hand to any task, no matter what it might be. Supporting your party by always having the right skill at the right time. You make an excellent herald, cleric, warrior. You name it, you can do it. And do it well. Or a caster. Wreathed in mystical powers. You draw on the powers of the beyond, shaping it, and using it to cast powerful spells at the blighted creatures you encounter. Your ability to wield the deadliest of magical powers makes you feared. The flame you conjure in your hand 
with a bolt of lightning called up from nothing. All weapons, all weapons become magic to you. That's a Germanization. No, 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 it's not like a legit. Anyways. I don't know. You are capable of obliterating the staunchiest of foes. Staunchy is such a good word. I love that word. That's a good word. And casters are good at exploiting an enemy's weakness. Your spells are great at dealing targeted damage. Hitting at a range, you can stay away from the enemy's melee attacks, keeping up your attacks at a distance. You make an excellent cleric, pyromancer, and sorcerer. So are there any of those four that really stick out to you? Yes. Just from the names. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Yes, which yes, which yes, one, yes. Bravo? Caster. 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 <laughs> so the caster's caster. highest stat is wisdom at a 15. But their lowest stat is going to be strength at an 8. And I will give you all of these values as we go through. What sticks out to you, Eric? I'm kind of I'm I'm liking the the fencer. I think with with all the backstory and our memories and drive, I feel like fencer is kind of kind of I'm leaning towards fencer. I love that. So fencers, to no surprise, Dex is their highest stat at a fifteen, but their wisdom is actually their lowest at an eight. I love that so, for a cleric. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to be really fun. Probably. Please. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I think it's going to be really fun. Uh, so, EJ, what are you feeling? What's the count? Bro. Bro. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be a little beefcake. You can probably guess which is the highest. I wonder what it is. <laughs> 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 That's going to be a strength at a 15. And their intelligence, which, mind you, it's not that they're dumb with an intelligence of eight. Oh, it just no. means that they might not process everything they see in oh, the fastest no, way. Oh, no, you're a genius? Oh, no. Hey, you're just, you're just a little guy. Just a little guy. <laughs> you remember when Jack-Jack gets angry in The Incredibles? It turns pink. Yes. Is that what's going to happen? Is that going to be... Remember that? No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. You know, I don't know. Who <laughs> what have I done? What have I created? It is only human to commit a sin. That was a really good like horror movie scream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'll be, I'll be a strong baby boy. <laughs> We don't say the B word. I was going to say, you can't oh, say oh, that. Oh, sorry. I'll be a strong little man. There you go. <laughs> that one looks. Hell yeah. Oh it, no, it's not babies fighting babies. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> there's no there's no children. There's just little men. <laughs> just little guys. Just little guys. Oh, guys. And then Drac, what stuck out to you? I think I'm going to go with Jack of all trades. Okay, did we yeah. intentionally get an even spread? That's great, but no, I didn't plan it. <laughs> nope. This is like, I mean, this pieces. this is great for a learning experience. Gabe is actually happy about it. I just didn't plan for it. Now I'm warm. <laughs> Y'all got me worked up. <laughs> uh, don't enjoy this. <laughs> Thank you. So something very interesting about this game as well is that it does use the concept of bloodied. A bloodied creature is a creature that is reduced to 50% or less of its health. Now I'm going to tell you this and I'm going to enjoy saying it. Each of the origins do get a bloodied bonus. Creatures also get bloodied oh, fuck. bonuses. <laughs> oh, that's phase two, huh? Yeah. Yes. So brutes... During combat, when reduced to 50% of their starting position pool, and position is another mechanic that is related to like health, stamina. I'm going to elaborate on that after this, but just so you have that concept to hold on to. During combat, when reduced to 50% of their starting position pool, a brute uh, gets an additional plus three to their constitution and to their AC. They gain Ooh. advantage on all strength related checks and saving throws, and they reduce all damage they take by two points. Oh, so I'm I'm just never gonna die. Yep. 
Don't say you that. Can... Gabe's gonna kill you so hard. You're gonna be a fast. I don't you're think gonna he die can. Did you, just hear, did you just hear what I get? Uh, <laughs> of my you're gonna walk up a set of stairs, and a boulder's gonna come down and crush yeah. you. That boulder, that boulder's gonna just crush you into a little, little. Well, it can just come on the. Okay. <laughs> All right, but <laughs> that was nice knowing little, the little lad. Uh... It's okay. I'll make more. <laughs> I'll just keep coming back when you make that more. Yeah. I'm going to destroy you. Oh God. <laughs> uh. So the fencer. When the fencer is bloodied, they get an additional plus two to their dexterity and to their AC. They may make one additional free reaction on their turn, and they reduce all melee weapon position spent costs by one. Ooh. So the fun thing about this, and the reason I said I would add to position, you can spend position, which is essentially your health, your stamina, combined in one sense. You can spend that on abilities and actions you make. So these skills that you use, the choices you take, might bring you one step closer to the grave, but it might be exactly what you need to make that save. It's like that little like that little rhyme. I did that for you, saving throw. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't mean that. I promise that I am not a narcissist. Uh, so- <laughs> So we're going to go to Jack of all trades. I don't know why they let me do this. <laughs> I, I don't honestly, know. I see exactly why they let you do I'm this. I, yeah, pretty clear. Probably. Uh, so the Jack of all trades, you will get an additional plus two to your wisdom and to your AC. You will gain advantage on all saving throws against magical attacks and effects. And you can remove any one negative condition of your choice while you are bloody. Ooh. See, there's there's a lot of bonuses to these things. So that's yeah. that's why I, I told I told this crew before we went live. If anything that I say makes you change your mind for what you want your character to be next time, please feel free. I just wanted to get you to make choices because it's good content, and then I get to tell you about things instead of being like, "Hey, we all already know what we're doing, so we're gonna sit here for two hours and just <laughs> talk about each guy. other." I love yep. it. It's for the flavor. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why the word flavor just broke me. I don't know what happened there. It's flavor. And last and least. No one, says, no, one ever, no one ever says last and least. Hello. Look, I, right hello. Now. It's me. <laughs> the caster. Yeah. Uh. I want Remember to know what happens hydrate? when I get bloodied. Remember to hydrate oh. when in chat? Make sure you drink up. Yes, hydrate. That's what was happening. Hydrate or mm-hmm. dehydrate. Have you not heard that before, Gabe? And that's a that's I'm, a I'm hydrate or not hydrate or dehydrate? Yeah. Hydrate, hydrate or dehydrate? dehydrate? No. I mean, you know you can die from hydrating too much, right? Yeah. Mean, yeah. But you can die more when you don't hydrate. <laughs> You can just die extra. You die extra. I, <laughs> you like you you double die instead of single die. I would know this. I'm a sorcerer. I'm really smart. You yeah, were very fortunate before. that Dark Souls is the only place I would ever say I would ever agree with you in the fact that you can die more. Die more. Um, yeah. You you, oh, you yeah. die more uh, in this set. Like that's this is the only circumstance where that sentence will ever make sense. So I'm proud of you. Yeah, I handpicked it. I thought ahead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So casters, <laughs> they get an additional plus two to their intelligence and charisma and to their AC. They may use any special armor abilities they have without needing to spend position. When withdrawing from combat, they do not trigger any opportunity attacks. I'm muting myself because that was a real cough. That wasn't me being sarcastic. <laughs> I'm going to be unhittable. So something interesting in that point is it gives you a little bit of hint of how position also works with other things. They may use any special armor abilities without needing to spend position. So there are plenty of different kinds of armor and weapon abilities that exist in the Dark Souls tabletop role-playing game. They will be using position, which like I was saying, you can use this pool that you have to get closer to the grave but also defend yourself in better ways. 
And position will be one of the ways that you will have to be able to use special abilities. So the caster is very fortunate. Now the question is, will you find good loot that lets you use it? Who knows? Actually, yes, I'm gonna tell you all right now. There will be opportunities to circumvent bosses in the way that you can in the Dark Souls video games. To circumvent the bosses, I'm going to put you through like hell, but with one L, which I guess in <laughs> mythology Ooh. is still hell with two L. Never yeah. mind. Hell with like mind. a lowercase h, maybe? I'm going to put you through hell light. High school. Diet hell. I'm Diet gonna hell. put you. No, I'm gonna put you through. I'm gonna put you through high school. Uh, I'm gonna put you through high school. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> There will absolutely be challenges to do it there, but there will always be a way to circumvent a boss. Fighting the boss, though, I'm going to tell you now, will be the easier choice. After you beat the boss, there will also maybe be ways to circumvent them, but you gotta beat the first one. So, so. and the yeah. the first one's gonna be a worm man. So. Just hold on to that. So fun. That was I not going to be a worm man. You I enjoy. Ride, oh, I want to no. ride the worm man. Can I ride Wait, the worm no. man? No. Yeah. No. Okay. Who are who 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 selected this group for me? <laughs> <laughs> who selected this group? I came here thinking that I was going to taunt these people into fear, <laughs> into concern. Blame Dom. There? I think I'll it's see a worm show. man. <laughs> Don't man. worry, it's gonna be so much more satisfying when it finally happens. When we're finally <laughs> scared of you. Because <laughs> yeah, so for now, are... I'm pretty visible. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Did you say you're you're pretty visible? You're. I'm pretty invincible. Invincible. I'm letting my hubris loose right now. So. Yeah, until we roll stats, you can't like do damage mm -hmm. to our characters. So yeah. Is... So the longer you we know... stall here, we're safer, right? Mm-hmm. We're safe in character creation. We're still right? we're, we're still in for five episodes, so you we, never get a chance. Yeah. To that is the worst sentence <laughs> I've ever heard. That is so factually true. We're still safe while in character creation. I mean, I guess. That's true. Yeah, I we guess haven't even hit Let us first scripted this. death yet or anything. Exactly. This is yeah. all we have. I'm still figuring out if the eye position is correct or if the nose looks mm -hmm. good before yeah. I never see my character's <laughs> yeah. face again. So. My with gamma levels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So shade there, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spending like an hour creating my character I'm never going to see again because I'm always going to be wearing a helmet. I'm going to be wearing a helmet <laughs> and... Damn, that does happen a lot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I will never not play a hot character, no matter how less I see their face. Me if neither. I know they're hot, I play better. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about classes. <laughs> <laughs> there are a bunch. I'm going to go over the different names, and then we're going to do a little round robin again, because I like interactivity, and it hey. makes the content last longer. I'm going to say the names of the different classes, and then if you want me to tell you more about it, I absolutely will. Uh, but let's make a game out of it. Everybody roll a d20. <gasps> okay. I rolled that one again. I don't really want to be hey, in this game anymore. Hey, <laughs> hey Drac, do me a favor. Throw that dice away. Uh, go no, get a new one. No, keep that. Keep that. <laughs> don't the listen to orders, You gotta keep it. <laughs> I have to listen to the Dreadmaster, you know. Okay, who... who who rolled, who feels like they rolled high? All right, Eric, Eric what'd you get? I got an at 20 again. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is our savior. <laughs> Eric, it's all on you. This whole Isn't he your cleric with a terrible wisdom? I, I feel like, <laughs> yep. I feel like Eric's character is gonna be that one guy who has three leashes, three kids on Trying leashes to keep us in the middle of a mall. Yo, I was convinced you were talking about an actual Dark Souls build, and I'm like, you can't hold three leash. There's no leashes You've in the game. Played, you never done leash build? Oh, never so done leash build. <laughs> leash build is OP. Soccer mom build. All the, yeah. all the speed runners used to leash Super build. Super meta, Everyone dude. All, all yeah. the speed runners. Super meta. <laughs> you know what? Look at this pretty art, because I will not acknowledge what these people are saying anymore. There is, oh. it's, it's, it's genuinely, and there is. I live there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what yeah, LA looks like. <laughs> that is what LA looks like. <laughs> <laughs> the same amount of smog. This is, okay, you got me there. I was like, this is not the LA I went to. 
but is oh you guys I see have... the real la where all the cathedrals and monasteries <laughs> cathedrals, are that's yeah. right i'll show you around next time yeah right at 4 p.m it gets crazy all the cathedrals come out all the cathedrals <laughs> are up from the ground what do you think the la brea tar pits are for dude come on mm -hmm. <laughs> this is these are weird people <laughs> so eric uh there is knight mercenary assassin warrior thief Herald, cleric, sorcerer, pyromancer, and the deprived. Which of those sounds the most interesting to you? To uh, I mean, cleric was interesting just because an initial thing, but I like the idea of maybe like thief, just like this, because clearly I'm a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> or assassin. Eric, yeah. it's well, you okay. know what? No, it's you not. We love you here. <laughs> Dad, stop speaking for I all know of about us. That. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm lying. I'm lying. Wait, no, now I feel bad. <laughs> no, no. Drac knows me pretty well. It's fine. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait. Drac's wait, feelings are valid. <laughs> so, you know, I'll tell you about both because you got the nat 20. You deserve that. Uh, so the one that's funnier is Cleric because we all know that Eric is going to have a negative one bonus to his wisdom. Cleric, a faithful follower of the gods and a channel for their divine power on Earth. Primary ability, wisdom. Saving throws and proficiencies, wisdom and charisma. <laughs> Armor and weapon proficiencies, all weapons, shields, swords, as long as the prerequisite is met. Wait, it says that for all of them. That part's not important for me to read to you. <laughs> I appreciate you. I appreciate you going through Welcome. it anyways. I wanted, I wanted you to have that. But then also Thief, a master of the bow and a purloiner of objects that don't belong to them. Primary ability, dexterity. Saving throws, dexterity and intelligence. So it definitely wasn't Drac. EJ, what did you roll? A three. Okay. Bravo, what did you roll? I rolled a 14. Ah, there we go. Bravo, you pick one. So, knight, mercenary, assassin, warrior, herald, sorcerer, pyromancer, or the deprived? Oh, gosh. I would I'll, You know what? I'll let you have two. You know, I'm I'm going Do to I be have nice. Two too? I didn't roll below a 10, go. so I feel like... Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In some games, the lower the number... Uh, hey, 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 now, hey, now, hey, now. Jack got an at one, so he doesn't get to hear about anything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I just have it. It's cool. You have to be deprived. That's you have to be deprived. Oh, no. That's the rule. Um, okay, I yeah. think pyromancer or sorcerer. So sorcerer, a learned scholar whose power is derived from years of studying magic tomes, primary ability intelligence, saving throws and proficiencies, intelligence and wisdom. And Pyromancer, a wielder of magical fire, and not too shabby with an axe either. Primary ability, charisma, saving throws, constitution, and charisma. Mm. I think I'll go sorcerer. I think sorcerer. that'll that fits that fits better. All right, so hold on to that. So EJ, knight, mercenary, assassin, warrior, herald. Do I have to say the others? The deprived. That's the word. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, uh, I think I'm going to pick the... Do, do I get two descriptions, too? I guess. <laughs> Thank you, because I, re I really want to know what the Herald is about, and I want to know what the deprived is about as well. Ooh. Herald, a stout warrior determined to protect themselves and their friends, and a wielder of miracles. Primary ability, strength, and charisma. And the Herald is the only one that actually is lit has two primary abilities listed. Mm -hmm. Its saving throws and proficiencies are wisdom and charisma. The deprived mm -hmm. an unfortunate soul <sighs> or an idiot. <laughs> Ooh, this is no one is entirely sure which. Their primary ability is one of your choice. Their saving throws and proficiencies are two of your choice. 
that's so tempting. I, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm uh, okay. I'll deprived, <laughs> deprived. Yeah. <laughs> and Drac, knight, mercenary, assassin, warrior. Those are the four that I haven't mentioned. And you could, you could, I can repeat any of the others if you really want to know. But um, I'm curious about the assassin. Assassin. A killer from the shadow is appearing when least expected to finish their enemy. Primary ability, dexterity. Their saving throws are strength and dexterity. And something, something that is very interesting about this game to me as well, there is actually a pretty even distribution of saving throws related to the abilities, depending on the different classes, thankfully. But the... Strength strength is the most common one. You will see dexterity, wisdom, charisma, intelligence, but it is it is a relatively even split across the board. So you may have characters that double up, but it's actually very rare. Okay. Do you want do you want to? I gave everybody a, I gave <laughs> I can't give everyone two pieces of candy and they'd be like, here, Jack, you can No, one. I wrote a one. I deserve it. <laughs> No, 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 no. He doesn't deserve two pieces yeah. of candy. Yeah, no, 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 no. Take, take, take your second piece so that I don't feel bad when I stomp you into the ground. <laughs> In that case, I don't want the second piece because I want you to feel bad and less likely to do it. That's a lie. I wasn't going to feel bad. It was just for people watching. Amazing. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Knight. A battle of wit. Knight? Yes. <laughs> a resolute warrior, well armored and devoted to their cause. Primary ability. <laughs> Strength, saving throws and proficiencies, strength and constitution. <laughs> Thank you for the pity, Candy. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, uh, what's what's that thing that I don't like, but other people do? It's like those it's like those mints that you find in offices that people oh. don't sell in regular stores, but it's oh. like the chocolate mints that are oh, square. No. Yeah, Andy's. Yeah, I love no. it. No. Love it. What are you talking about? Of course you do. Ah! I don't. I'll just say what is original. Never like go to get like a massage and they leave it on the pillow. And you're like, oh, candy. That's what they gave you. It's me. And you went? Did you go back? <laughs> of course I went back. Get more Andy's. <laughs> Not for the massage, just for the. Not for the massage. <laughs> I take it. Who cool. hurt you? So many people. Oh no! <laughs> God. <you're> <laughs> <laughs> Cassie, this is an incident. Adding games, names here. to the bottom of the list. <laughs> Drac, do you want me to start alphabetically or? Drac, which one do you like? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not prepared for this. Um, I, Gabe is taking damage from this more than they are. <laughs> I, I'm honestly, weirdly enough, I'm feeling pyromancer. Hell yeah. Ooh. Okay. I'm, I'm a little pyromaniac Ooh. on the inside, and I feel like stitches would be as well. And Eric, what, what was sticking out to you? Was then was it the thief? Was it the cleric? Or what is it one of the others? I do like the idea of being a cleric that's not very good at being a cleric. You <laughs> rolled two 20s in this. Yeah. I think you're going to be very successful no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'll, I'll mm -hmm. stick with cleric because I like playing yeah. suboptimal. Yes. <laughs> stat wise. Hell yes. Just to defy the gods. <laughs> Show mm -hmm. them. Just hey, like I sure why try. me? Why? Why me? Why? Yeah. Why? Do, why do I do this? Narratively, mwah, beautiful. On paper, so one, mm. one of the other very cool things about this book, I have talked about the artwork. But looking at the knight, for example, they have beautiful artwork of the starting builds that you did see right in the beginning of the video game. So we have. Someone's in my head, but you can't hear it. Sorry. Oh, what is a lie? I can hear it. What do you mean? That's <laughs> scary. <laughs> that is more concerning. Why did everyone pick ones that were so far in the damn book? <laughs> this is our revenge. <laughs> this, is our rev revolution. this is the only chance we're going to be able to fight back. So we're, <laughs> we're taking it. Cleric, the gods speak to you. Or at least something speaks to you. Some vast power listens when you pray, grants you the ability to call upon resources you don't truly understand. And with these barely understood powers, you create miracles. You reshape the world entirely. Light blooms in darkness. Evil is driven back. You bring the light of faith into the ever encroaching shadows. You are the memory of the sun, praise it, in the light of eternal night. The cleric is the conduit of the gods whatever god still gazed down 
upon this benighted world that is. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the cleric class. And if that still appeals to you, then that's what we'll end up rolling with. Clerics... Well, so yes, clerics will be getting two skills, and you'll be choosing well proficiency in two skills, and you'll be choosing from history, insight, medicine, persuasion, and religion. So familiar skills from five E that you will know. Your starting equipment is going to be an Estus flask, which is comparable to a healing potion in the Dark Souls world, a mace, their sacred chime, which will you be using to create your miracles, and cleric robes. Da, 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 da. God, this is going to be great. The sorcerer. What good wis- What good wisdom is if it brings no profit to the wise? This you were always taught. And so when you began to study, you sought a subject capable of granting you something more than simply erudition. And so you found the grimoires, the tomes of sorcery, in which spells and incantations and endless reams of forgotten from bitter lore were kept. You studied with the avidity of a starving man who hunts for bread, constantly hunting out the most esoteric of secrets. And you learned well. Now the magic obeys you. And you made the weird little creepy men. Uh, your starting equipment is an Estes flask, a mail breaker, which is a deadly weapon, and I'll show you that later, Ooh. a leather shield, the sorcerer's staff, and the sorcerer's robes. Your proficiencies will come from arcana, history, insight, investigation, medicine, and religion. And just like the cleric, you will have access. Everyone's going to have spell casting except the little man. Oh, no. I don't get to cast all my little guy's spells. <laughs> You're the worst. Pyromancer. <laughs> Fire is life. Ball is life. Fire is life. So some believe. And you wield that life, drawing power from it and using it to smite your enemies furiously. You create dancing balls of flame in your hand and fling them at those who seek to deprive you of the fire of life. Is that is this related to that fire thing from your backstory, Drac? Like wanting to be Lord of Cinder? Is that why you picked Pyromancer? Oh, no. I just really like fire. <laughs> We're not going into that. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> the flame trickles over your fingers, never singeing your skin. It is yours to command, yours to possess and use. You are the descendants of the four lords of Cinder. Oh, whoa. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That was an accident, honestly. I just really like fire, but um, <laughs> that works perfectly. <laughs> that was so funny. Oh, whoa. Cool. I just liked it. I, I would love it if that's your character's outlook. It's like, I do fire. I mean, Cinder Lord, I guess, yeah. I guess that yeah. works. Yeah. Sweet. That's just math. That? Yeah, it'd be like dope. <laughs> Quit math, man. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. I gotta not keep talking. I'm gonna uh, I'm, uh, make some notes for something. Oh, oh God. God. Oh, that- in like a cool and fun way though, right? It's it's oh, way yeah. less and no, it is it is as concerning as you think it is. I'm changing <laughs> the glass. I'm gonna find Don't my worry. whatever it is, I'm sure I can take it. I think I can tell <laughs> based on the way that Gabe's arm's moving, it's just like don't kill what? Bravo. Mm-hmm, but do mm-hmm. kill EJ. Yeah, yeah. Oh I no, mm, I can actually <laughs> see in the reflection of his glasses what he's writing right now, and it actually says never kill the little guy. Right. Oh, okay, yeah. That, I guess that's I was the note, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh shit they were right what the fuck um, <laughs> well, now i gotta start <laughs> over <laughs> so the pyromancer is going to getting an estus flask a hand axe a round shield pyromancer's garb and the pyromancer's flame or glove your skills will come from arcana deception insight intimidation persuasion, and religion, as well as, like the other two, you will have access to spellcasting. Let's talk about that thing. (laughs) That little guy. At some point, they're going to have a name. Eventually. It's going to be a good one. The Deprived. (laughs) There is so little of you left. Mm. No possessions. 
no memories. All you know is that you scrambled out of the grave, called once more. What had you been in life? Perhaps you were a fool, a jester, an entertainer. Or perhaps you were a knight, a great warrior. You wish you could remember. Instead, there's just the cold on your exposed skin. And the knowledge of a life entirely lost to you. You'll need to make yourself anew, forging a new self in this shadowed world. It is unfortunate, then, you cannot die. That the enkindled return again and again to the bonfires. You are going to die a lot before you discover what and who you are meant to be. Mm. You work with this. Your starting skills. You can choose two from any of the skills. I'm not going to say all of those. That that is it. There, there, there. That's mm-hmm. a lot to say. But your starting equipment is an Estus flask, a club, mm-hmm. and a plank shield. <laughs> and that comes with all sorts of cool spells, right? It comes with a spell and... called whack. <laughs> and. <laughs> And, and I'm sure you get all sorts of cool armor too, right? Yes, it's called body hair. <laughs> yeah. uh, you just made me a furry little guy. I hope oh, you know no. that. <laughs> I need you to defi- I need you to define what that means exactly so I'm not making assumptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever played Club Penguin? You know the little puffles? The little pets that you have that are just furry little balls? I never should have asked this question. <laughs> you asked no. Question, sir. No. What a curse. Oh. <laughs> what a curse on this house. <laughs> Good God. Oh. Okay. So the Dark Souls tabletop game does offer a wide variety of variant rules. One of them is it does lean into the idea of passive checks. But passive checks don't just have to be in the way that you've seen them in 5th edition, like how you have passive wisdom, passive perception, and passive insight, those sorts of things. You can have passive checks related to all of the skills that you have. So unless you choose to roll... And you're just trying to go through, there will be times that I'll probably just give them something, give you something. Uh, I have no doubt, bravo, um, that at some point you'll just start asking to roll things that I would have probably given you anyways, bravo. And I will happily take you, bravo, rolling over uh, just the automatic passive check, because that is a variant rule that we can do. Well, here, here's the question. Would all of you like passive checks, actually? Yeah. That, is, that is something that yeah. I want to... Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's actually, important to discuss. For me specifically, I would like to roll for all of mine, because I'm not always competent when I play Dark Souls. <laughs> so I'm going to take That's the into the point. role-playing game. That's yeah. a really good point. I'm really smart and amazing, so I won't need to roll. <laughs> My character's stats are kind of bonkers right now in the wrong places. <laughs> in like a cool way. Like, a, like cool a cool and chill way. way. Yeah, you're quirky. You're different. You're not like the other clerics. You're not I think like I'd like to roll for mine as well, just because I feel like sometimes my little guy will just have like a, like a stroke of genius, you know? <laughs> that maybe oh, the passage um... wouldn't reflect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm glad we're all on the same page here. Oh, yeah. No, I'm loving it. So, and as you heard with some of the bloodied skills, advantage and disadvantage are something that are in this game. It does use the proficiency bonuses in the same way that D&D does as well. But let's talk a little bit about positioning. Positioning, which is your health and stamina. It will come from your class, and it will... It's how I kill them. Oh, no. Uh, So in the Dark Souls role-playing game, careful management of health and stamina is critical to success. Unlike traditional role-playing games, the Dark Souls role-playing game doesn't use hit points to represent a character's vitality, and instead uses position. Position not only represents an abstraction of health and stamina, but it's their way to affect dice rolls and use key abilities, adding a strategic layer to any combat, and means that Gabe doesn't have to do as much math. That's not in the book, but I felt like it was important to clarify. Each character's base position is equal to their current level 
plus their constitution modifier. So those of you with lower constitutions, I'm coming for you. Ah. And the maximum value of the dice in their position pool. If the character's position is reduced to zero, that position, that character is killed. At first level, a character's base position is equal to their constitution modifier, the maximum value of their origins position dice, which is this game's version of the hit die, and their current level. So, for example, a knight with a constitution of 15, which is a plus 3, a bruiser origin, which is a 1d10 position, and at first level has a base position of 3 for their bonus, 10 for the origin, and 1 for being level 1. So it'll keep going up as you level up. It'll keep going up as your bonuses change. And it does mean that your health does technically change a little bit when you are bloodied if your constitution goes up. Keep that in mind. Okay. Whenever you level after first level, you increase your base position as your constitution modifier and the new level. So when a knight, for example, reaches second level, the character adds their plus three con modifier and their new level to the base position. So it would be three plus two. You see how it starts exponentially growing as you level up more and more? Yes. And that is that is something that I genuinely love because it is very easy to keep track. You know what the bonus to your next level is going to be. You don't have to roll for that. Uh, it is basically taking the middle thing. And it also keeps things... When you have a party of characters, it makes it significantly easier to keep their healths much closer together. You won't necessarily get a character who is like 20, 30 ahead of everyone else. Ugh, thank God. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot deal with that. So position is something important to keep track of as well because abilities will ask you to use position. There are three important rules to that. One, you can only spend position on yourself. Two, you can only spend position once per turn. And number three, you cannot trigger critical effects by spending position. Some common uses of it are increasing your melee or ranged attack damage roll by one per position you spend. So if you hit a target, you could spend position to do extra damage. You cannot spend more than five position on a single attack roll. This is a great boon and bonus, but keep in mind, position is essentially your health. So if you are spending the position to increase that attack, be careful how you do it because you don't necessarily know what would come next. You can use position to increase your movement. You can gain five feet of movement per position spent. So if you spent five position in a turn, you can move an extra 30 feet and sprint away. It might just be the speed you need to get safely away. You can increase the result of a die roll by plus one per position. There is no limit on how much position you can spend on an attack roll. So you could roll a one, and if you had sufficient proficient position, hit a creature with an AC of 10, or 15, or 20 by spending the position bonus you need to do it. Oh, okay. But you would leave yourself much more vulnerable. So this game, to your luck, does not do natural ones for attack rolls as an automatic miss. Uh-huh. With that said, if you choose to gamble your position and spend it, which, you know what, gave personally thinks that if you ever roll a one you should you should gamble it like you should spend that 10 position spend that fit spend that mm -hmm. 15 position mm -hmm. just go for okay. it yeah you wouldn't you never lead us astray yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i, I trust you wholeheartedly you sound earnest and honest so we all just rolled nat ones on our insight by the way <laughs> <laughs> but please do not forget that position also counts as your health so if it hits zero you die. And I'm going to tell you now, I am willing to play it that you can spend position and kill your character that way. Ooh. Oh, That's, this is the one time I wanted that reaction. <laughs> one time. 
<laughs> hell yes. So there are interesting rules for death as well. Uh, there are a couple of different ways that you can run it. Something that I'm willing to try, probably for the first session or so as we are getting into it on the first section of the adventure. There are rules for what happens when the entire party is under a certain threshold of health. And that is when you would go back to the bonfire. For the first run through, and session two or three, whenever we really get into it, I am open, if everyone agrees, to make it so a game over happens when all characters have died. Ooh. Do you, do any of you have a preference on how you would like to do it? I kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Raises the stakes a little bit. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Good. And combat will go fast because I'm not going to be nice. You're going to win or the monster is going to win. Notice I didn't say me. I'm uh, not playing it. I'm not playing against them. Uh, I'm you're playing. not evil in this situation. You're not the villain. No, don't hit the it button. Only human. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? Oh my God, wild. Uh, yes. So if we are all willing, then we can do it so that the way that you return to the bonfire that you have failed is if all of you have died. I like that. Yeah. Now understand this. Oh. I will, 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 will. Uh, not so much take up more time for role playing when that happens. But if let's say, <laughs> let's say cleric Eric is the only one alive. And cleric Eric is trying to reach a bonfire safe far away. If cleric Eric does not reach the bonfire, I'll revive you all back at the previous bonfire. No, don't say it, Gabe. Oh. But hey, but well, let's we're just we're just gonna see what happens to okay. the thing that you killed. Oh God! I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm 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 down for this. I like this that. This really is Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah, dang right it is. <laughs> we can do it, guys. Don't worry. I think we can so, do it. <laughs> so, are there any questions so far? Does it does it feel relatively self-explanatory? Yes. Yeah. That is incredibly important. Uh, jokes aside, uh, yes. So that that I mean, as long as it sounds like it makes sense, that's what's important. I will be sending yeah. you more of this stuff later on, but that way as well. In this first session, we're getting an idea of the stuff that we are comfortable to do, because even if I joke about wanting to put you through hell, I don't want to put you through hell unless you decide going through hell is fun, which seems fitting for this group because you're all a fun bunch to me. Of oh, yeah. delightful weirdos. Oh yeah. <laughs> And something else that I do like about this game, this is actually one of my favorite features, is group checks. When several individuals are trying to accomplish something in a group, the GM might ask for a group ability check. In such a situation, characters who aren't skilled at a particular task can just help cover those who aren't. To make a group ability check, everyone in the group makes the ability check. If at least half the group succeeds, the whole group succeeds. Oh. Otherwise, the group fails. Group checks may not come up often, and they're most useful when all the characters succeed or fail as a group. For example, when adventurers are navigating a swamp, the GM might call for a group wisdom survival check to see if the characters can avoid the reaching tendrils of deadly plants. If at least half the group succeeds, the successful characters can guide their companions out of danger. Otherwise, the group then stumbles into a hazard. I genuinely enjoy that because that means that everyone can have a chance to actually roll and engage with the story. It also means that you can help offset some of the failures. It's it's nicer if half of the people succeeding means everyone can succeed than three out of four people succeeding and that fourth person is treated as like dragging the party down. Right. It also means that if you are sneaking and someone rolls a two and everyone else rolls above, the two is then offset. Why did you smile like that, EJ? It's like, you know it's gonna be you. No, 
I mean, I'm playing like the best class, so it can't be me. Never. Mm -mm, not at all. This is gonna be a really fun game. I'm very, very excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Just decide, I'm so excited. I'm. Yeah. <laughs> so there's. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of this. Uh, for those of you watching, there are so many rules in this book. Everything that I have said is this far in the book of this. <laughs> there is a lot. Uh, there, so there, and there are environmental rules. Now, not all of these are going to come up, but just so my lovely party have some information on this, and I can tell all of you about it, there are different rules for long jumps versus high jumps. There is, of course, rules for falling, because that is a 5e standard. And we made sure to include rules for suffocating, because that was important to Gabe for no reason. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> I want to keep my mind. It's no. Mm -hmm. no. I feel it's like it'd be relevant to Stitches as well, honestly. Stitches was fun. Mm -hmm. I feel like he knows. <laughs> I there know. are... It's a character choice that like, I don't <laughs> you... breathe. Mm -hmm, you, said you, mm -hmm. you said you don't breathe? I, it's a character choice, so like suffocating like wouldn't need to like even like- Yeah, you know, she's like, like immune. I'm like immune to like suffocating. Like, cause like- And yeah. also fire and also thunder and force. Also my- Also my funny, there was a character choice. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, you can say you don't die. All I'm gonna do is make a giant dog eat you, and then you're just no. stuck inside of its stomach for eternity. <laughs> and you're, not, you're not suffocating because you don't need to breathe and you're immune to the pain. So you just are stuck in there forever. Just being maybe. digested by the Sarlacc for a thousand years. Maybe, yes. maybe, maybe, maybe I do breathe, I guess. You know, it, this, this is a game uh, where dying means at least you go back somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That is true. That is a good idea <laughs> for a lot of things. So there are short rests as well as long rest. A short rest, you can spend the position die in the same way you would have hit die with 5e. Long rests will give you your health back, and they can use it to get their abilities back. They can gain other benefits. At a long rest, you will restore your Estus Flask. When at a bonfire, a player cannot be attacked, and while resting, they don't need to know about that part. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. Well, you trailed, you trailed yes. off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we didn't hear that last part. Well, at a bonfire, a player cannot be attacked, and they do not need to roll for random encounters. <gasps> oh, Ooh. interesting. Good to know. Cool, 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 cool. Which cool. May, or may, not, may or may not be uh, built into the game. Um, mm -hmm. That's irrelevant. So, what That'll is be fine. that? Uh, ooh. And this is where it gets interesting. Huh? So when I say this is where it, it's been interesting for a while. So there's a lot of effects when you die that can happen. If you know the Dark Souls table, if you know the Dark Souls video game, when your character dies, they are hollowed before they go to get their souls. So of course, of course we made something like that terrible for all of you for this. Yay. When a player character is killed and respawned, Part of them dies or is lost. Memories of their past selves fade to be replaced only by emptiness. The unkindled do not die, but they do diminish. When a player character responds, they must succeed on a DC 18 wisdom save. Or should they fail, they must roll on the hollowing effect table. <gasps> now, and now, now I'm super I'm... glad I got that negative one to wisdom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> This is gonna I be was gonna so say, I don't think cool. any of us have a bonus to wisdom. Wait. I think I do. I think I have like a plus one. I have a plus one in like everything, I think. I do. I do have a, Ooh, a bonus. Gamers. I'll be fine. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm, we'll mm -hmm. um, It'll just make you quirkier. I'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. I would love to do another. Let's, let's just say hypothetically, you fail your roll. I want everyone mm -hmm. to roll a d20 <gasps> for me. Oh my god. I want to give you a sneak peek <laughs> as well as the people watching of what it would be. I would this like some new dice. Does anyone can anyone send me dice please? Yeah, 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 is, that a, exactly. is that a one Jack? Yeah. Is that a one? Drag! Yeah. Get rid of it! Throw in the trash! No, yeah. no bravo. 
<laughs> I'm a god. Don't listen to him. I'm Pass it into the fire. <laughs> Just yes, in, into the fire, Drac. The fire. <laughs> Become the Lord of Cinder. Hold on to the Drac. Hold on to the Drac. Never let it go. I'm going to hold on to it. Um, oh, yes. I'm going to tempt fate. <laughs> And also, so to, to be very clear, Saving Throw did make a good point. I want to actively say it. This is a game where your lines and veils are very important. It gets weird. There is plenty of different effects. There is, if you if you have seen the video games or anything from, from software in that sense, uh-huh. the things get very graphic. And people, like, that is, that is why we have game ratings in that sense. Um, something that I was going to introduce later on, but it's also a good point to say now is when we start the games... I will be putting, I will be vocalizing a content warning ahead of time for anything that may be in it. If there is like depictions of something that are graphic, you will know that ahead of time. If there is um, potentially like upsetting dialogue that I have written out ahead of time, I will be giving you a warning of that. If there is my Players have given me lines and veils, thankfully. This is stuff that we have actively discussed, and it's important to actively say that um, we are here to learn how to play a cool, fun game, here to engage and play a strange, probably difficult game, but we are here to have a good time, and we are here to be safe doing it, because I I don't know. I, I would not want to be playing this game and being here if we were not actively able to all enjoy it. I worked retail. I have done many oh, things God. that I did not enjoy. Ugh. And now I will never go back. Talk about dark I souls. That. <laughs> God. Yeah. Life working retail feels Talk like about dying dark health. souls. Well, you know what? We just got a raid. So I think that's a great time. Uh, we're going to start with Drac of what... Oh. Uh, these horrible things are. So right now, what we're doing is we're talking about the Dark Souls role-playing game, and we are going through a chart of what would happen if they had died, respawned, and, you know, were hollowed out. So, Drac, you rolled a one, right? Yeah, my fourth one of today. I think that's a a record for me. That feels mathematically impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually one... I'm not going to do the math of it. I was going to do it, and I was like, no, thank you. I'm live on on stream. (laughs) So there's like some good and bad thing. You know what? Okay, Drac, you're gonna be last. Uh, there's some good oh. and bad things that can happen, um, depending on this. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Drac last. Oh, okay. I didn't <laughs> say that. You said that. Eric, what'd you get? <laughs> I rolled a sixteen. Sixteen. Ooh. Oh hell yeah, fortune. You have the eerie sense that you had already lived this life in some way. You gain one point of inspiration, which you may use at any point on any single test. What the hell is your luck? It, yeah, it's weird. I think I think my character like somehow was like a bad person, and then God was like, "Nah, you, you get to you get to go one more." He's like, "All right, uh. <laughs> I'll take it." <laughs> uh, what did you get, Bravo? You're going to be like our little good luck charm. I rolled a natural 20. Ooh, took one good luck charm. Miracle of the grave. Perhaps oh. you are less than once you were, but this time upon returning to life, you feel alive. Gain <gasps> plus two to any single attribute. Oh my God. So dying can be a good thing. Here I go. Those are, those are two really good ones. Now, EJ, what did you get? I got a two. Oh my god! So <laughs> two easy. more good ones. We got a two and a one. Two more good ones. Flesh withers. Um, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> your skin oh. tightens on your bones, mummifying, even as you watch. Lose Ooh. two from your charisma permanently. <gasps> Come and- Oh, you turn into Wait, a but this, is like, this is a practice round, right? This is a, this is a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is no, oh, no. This is definitely a practice round. I didn't read your. Oh, this is the effect. Oh that no, that is a fuzzy little guy. This is real life. <laughs> EJ just becomes. I lost two out of my four charisma. <laughs> <laughs> what was mine? Uh, it's called empty. Oh, oh. Like, so. Really? The- <laughs> <laughs> like real life? 
Oh my god, EJ. Go. I thought this was Sorry, escaping him, but I guess it's not. not. <laughs> um, there is nothing left for you. There's nothing left of you to be consumed. You, whatever that means, is gone now. You are a mindless thing. You must create a new character. <gasps> oh my oh, that's god. That's so cool. That's so fucking that's cool. That's awesome. Whoa. Oh my gosh. This game oh, that's rocks. awful. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is a practice run, right? That was a practice yeah. run. Okay. Ooh. This game rocks. Oh yeah, my god. That's that's so dope. So, I so mean, it's horrible. this this is a great way to get it. It's very. It's it's weird that dying is a fun gamble because mm -hmm. you get ridiculous bonuses like Eric and Bravo got, or you get a horrible. <laughs> horrible situations like ej and drek because hey who knows maybe maybe you'll get plus two to an attribute for life you get a boost of inspiration or you mummify a little bit or it, you gotta make a new character oh that's it mm -hmm. Yep, I'm, gonna, to, I'm gonna play um, Scratches, uh, Patch's <laughs> little sister. <laughs> Go through the whole list as the much list. as you can exhaust it. <laughs> and that is four out of 20 possible options. Oh, that's amazing. So, mm. hey, y'all. Honestly, feel free to die as much as you want. <laughs> this is gonna be so exciting. And, oh and this this is part of why I asked that question earlier about if you wanted it to be so that one person could succeed. Because let's say Cleric Eric again is the one who survives and Cleric Eric makes it back to the bonfire. The other three of you will be revived and you gotta make that roll every time Ooh. you die. Hmm. Let's go. <laughs> hmm. I love this game. I've got a whole Patches character, whole Patches family ready, written up for this film. Oh gosh. <laughs> My guys are just gonna keep getting littler and littler. So kill until them at your own risk. Until they're a little, just a single atom. Just that, mm -hmm. that episode of Futurama where Bender keeps getting split into smaller Benders. Exactly. <laughs> this is how you wanted your game to be played, right Gabe? Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, so here's, okay, so I'm just, I'm going to give the party a little bit of time to role play because we have about 30 minutes. But just to tell you more about this book and to get people excited for it, there are pages on cover, different bloodied conditions, mounted combat. There is a little section on underwater combat. There is different bits of casting time. And one of the absolute coolest pieces of this book to me, at least aesthetically, is when you get to the spells and equipment, it is depicted in the <gasps> same ways that it is oh, no <laughs> way. the video that's game. So oh my god, I'm totally gonna geek out right now. That is amazing. And like for example, if you are looking at the different armors, it does the same as well. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. That is so awesome. Yeah, it is incredibly well done. I'm genuinely impressed. And it'll say what the AC bonus is, what the strength bonus is. And don't forget, this is a Dark Souls game. So killing creatures will elicit you souls. <gasps> and you can spend souls on buying equipment, on new abilities, and so on. We'll get a little bit more into that later. But like I said, I wanted to give this party a little bit of time to role play. How does that sound to all of you? So juicy and amazing. Yeah. I'm down. I just busted out a quick sketch of my character because I'm very excited. Her name's Meliora. She's a baddie. Ooh. She's a baddie. She's a baddie. I'm very excited. Can you tell? Uh, I so hope excited. you never roll. I hope you never roll a one. I hope I don't chart. get rid of my sweet sorceress <laughs> baddie. Honestly, I'll probably be the one rolling one, so don't worry. <laughs> you just away. need new dice. <laughs> no, never throw that dice away because that means that might turn into an NPC that I get. Ooh. Okay. Oh, That's no. fun. And I will use them against you. This is going to be fun. amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited. Like, even thinking about like the worst possible scenario sounds thrilling. Like, mm -hmm. this is so exciting. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're the person that the Dark Souls games were made for. I hope you yep. that, Bravo. <laughs> That's delightful. All of you feel a soft breeze. You open your eyes, but still see almost complete darkness. There is a small bit of light that seems to be coming out of a crack, but you're not sure exactly from where. You feel the ground below you shaking. You feel trapped, constricted a little bit. And then whatever is blocking you in front falls open. You see three others in very similar situations around you and a bonfire in between all of you. It looks like you're in some sort of underground cavern blocked off in the distance. You now realize, looking at the other three, you're inside of a standing stone coffin. And sitting at the bonfire is a cloaked figure, gnarled hand, long nails curling almost around the staff as if it's locked in place, and slow breathing. Ugh. Uh, I see, I see, I see. All of you here in your heads simultaneously. What do you do? Not a fan of that. Um, he's just gonna pull himself out of the, of the coffin. Um, any idea where I am? And who are you, you all? For narrative purposes, none of you know each other. You don't know your names yet, because I just threw them on <laughs> the <middle of> spot. <laughs> Meliora, Meliora is just like this. Damn, I room. guess you do have a name. I have fancy I was ready. Yeah. We're open right now. I was ready. Stitch. I was ready as all stitches. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Drac, and EJ have been like, what are you thinking about doing? Wow, y'all just <laughs> threw <laughs> Eric <laughs> under the bus. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's what happened. I can't deny it. I'll get Eric in on the next character, I promise. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> when I inevitably roll a one. <laughs> Meliora does like, just like a ghostly, ghastly, like dramatically wakes up. Just like a. <gasps> Good gods. Then steps out of the coffin and dusts her like cloak, robe, dress off. You guys just see some like gross kind of gooey fingers kind of curl around the edge of the the coffin thing that I was in. The little little nasty goblish head pop out. Go. <laughs> I'm not the only one here. <laughs> Do you know where I am? No, no. Um... <laughs> oh, you're gonna be a joy. <laughs> I don't get that often. Yeah, doesn't surprise me. I'll just pop all the way out. And the head of the figure is slowly turning at each of you anytime you speak. Uh... Should we like uh, address that person or each other? Or oh. should we uh, Look, I... terrifying to me. I'd rather leave it be. Perhaps. <laughs> I felt a lot safer in, back inside my coffin. Thank you very much. I. Um, hmm. Is it coming from the guy? Is the music coming from the guy? Is 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 it coming from his voice or from? Does he have a music box? There's a music box in his hands. It slowly rises up. Oh! <laughs> um, excuse me. Um, hello. It's gonna crash down in front of the, the person. Hi. And at a closer inspection of their face, the left half looks to almost be entirely bone. The right looks like it's covered in. Leaves and ash mixed together. Welcome, oh. unkindled. 
unkindled. Um, Is that your name? <laughs> no. I'm the... What did the last ones call me? The Graves Ticker. That's what they told me. Oh. It was, um, a combination of names. Oh, uh, well, I'm Stitches. Everlasting Stitches, but my friends call me Stitches. Mm. Um, are we... Now, is a silly question, or maybe not. Are we dead? No. <laughs> I've never been dead before. Because, like, I remember dying. You are a match that went out and your flame. Well, it just wouldn't stay diminished. It's not bright, but it is there. So, no, you're not dead, but you will die again and again and again. Okay. Fun. Fun. Are you Fun. dead? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh. I would have guessed with the whole. Oh no. This has nothing to do with death. Oh. And they move their cloak away from their chest, uh, and you see nine daggers piercing their chest. Oh my. That would do it. Yeah, no, that would. That would do it. Well, who did that? The last rope of a kindled. Oh. So I did my job, and I took them back to their graves. Oh. And then got oh. new ones. Oh. Us. Okay. Um. Yes. Right. I so turn to whoever's right next to me, probably Eric. Um. Does that mean we have to kill him this time? I don't. Um, are we supposed to kill you, or is there like a thing? And the grave taker stands up a bit. And they start to rise out of the ground, almost like their shadow is elongating, going up higher and higher, until it's about ten feet high, just under the cave ceiling. And then a large hand, down where the shadow is reaching the ground, pulls out from under the ground. A second one. And a large body. Turn that off. A large body <laughs> pulls itself out of the ground. The grave keep the grave taker's body, as you saw it, almost dangling from the top like the bulb of an anglerfish. <laughs> and what they're attached to is what looks to be almost a large mole rat. With instead of a nose, it's the long shadow that goes to the grave taker's body. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, um, I just want to make it very clear that I'm not with them. Um, they. Wait a second. You, we all work up together. Don't try. Okay, to just because we're in the same room together doesn't mean we're accomplices or anything. Say so, uh, whatever, everything that one little one said. I'm not involved or associated with it, but you wouldn't call us friends. No. Oh, I would. <laughs> Perhaps if you seek to take us to a grave, we need not fight you, right? Perhaps I'll be willingly. Would like to go a little kindly. <laughs> <laughs> And the naked mole rat's face opens up and just lets out a bellowing scream for a solid 10 seconds that makes your skin tingle <laughs> and your hair go back. And the weird little man thing jiggles a little bit, probably. Ew. <laughs> it's a great way to get rid of the tension. You're welcome. Um, and I would like 
all of you, because you don't have stats yet, <laughs> to roll a d20 for me. Okay. Come on. And then I'm going to go around the circle. Do a track. And no, you can't. They're lying. <laughs> And you know what? We're going to go around the circle. Let's start with you, Drek. I rolled pretty good this time. Gross. I rolled a 13. <laughs> okay, lovely. What did you get, Bravo? I got a 12. Oh, great. Uh, what did you get, Eric? I rolled a 4. Hell Ooh. yes. And then what did you get, EJ? 17. Oh. Beautiful. Cool. Write those numbers down for me. That'll be important later. Uh -oh. Okay. Uh -oh. And the grave taker, the humanoid body, sinks back down to where the large rat-like body was. And it actually pets the head three times. And then it looks like the body starts to subside and relax. Look, you upset him. Uh, How rude. Sorry. I mean, if I could find where I left my wares, I'm sure I'd have something that could um, appease your pets. Is it a, a, a dog? Um, a dog. That was your first thought. Is it a dog? Bigger than a dog. <laughs> have you ever seen a I've dog? Seen so I've seen some pretty big dogs, okay? Okay. Right. No. It's not a dog. You want your things. Well, you'll have to earn those first, unkindled. Oh, no. And I think that's actually a good place to hold for the role play. And then we'll get to dive in into a little bit more next week when we're going to do a little bit more world building. But before we go, I actually have a couple questions that I want to throw at these people and get some interesting prompts for what we're going to put into this world. I want to give you a little bit of world building now. So I'm going to start with Bravo, because Bravo has the most excitement for absolutely terrifying things. I love her! <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Yes, King. <sighs> don't suck up to me. <laughs> now I don't. Now I want to ask a nicer now question. Now you don't want to do bad things to you. <laughs> yes, King. What is a terror that you think exists in the Dark Souls world? Like a terror as a feeling? Or like a terror as like something I can see and stab? Both. <gasps> or that you think should exist? Or you think could exist? I love the concept of um, something like kind of like a Grave Lord Nito, where the failed unkindled kind of ama uh, like amass into something that... Um, moves with one mind but has the experience of previous unkindled who have failed on their quest love it that's so interesting wow good good one thanks Whew, that's gonna be for no reason at all uh eric <laughs> what is when you think of an ominous challenge in a world like this. What's something that comes to mind? Uh, the thing that I don't like in a, in a Souls like game, it's just something that is just scale, like something that is just there's like, how does my tiny body go up against whatever that is? you're like? That thing mm. is enormous. There's no way I could ever take it on. Right. making my life so much easier. <laughs> Drac. Yes. Mm, now that one's too easy. And that one's too nice. I mean, I'll go with a nice one. Nah, that's a good one. Oh, okay. If you 
were in a Dark Souls universe, what do you think would have to exist? What is the kind of creature that you see and your first thought is, oh, hell no. And then you realize that you have to fight it because it's a story boss. <laughs> Ooh. Um, oh, okay. That's a tough one. Um, yep. Because I'll be honest, all Dark Souls bosses are like that for me. Yep. Do would you would you be more concerned about something that was humanoid shaped or bestial shaped? Humanoid. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> now, would you be more afraid of something that tries to bite you or something that tries to hit you with a sword? Bite. I can. At least in my head, I can disarm something that has a sword. <laughs> yep. Oh, this is going to be good. And EJ. Something wipes out your entire party. Oh. But you think that you can take it. What kind of abilities do you think it has? Hmm. First thing that comes to mind, I'm a little guy, I'm very agile, so probably something with big slow movements, maybe like a big tail whip or a, a big club or big AOE stuff. Oh, well, I'm giving, I got too excited about the question. I gave you too many, <laughs> too many answers. <laughs> now he's no. going to use all of them. You gave me, yes, I will. <laughs> yes, I will. And part, part of the reason I like that is because then at this point, it, it gives me, as a storyteller, a bit of a way to opt into ideas that you have had. But also, then it means that the ideas that you give you're excited about are ideas that I feel way more comfortable using than stuff that is an mm -hmm. absolute actual nightmare. So now I have the idea of an unkindled mass, a terrifying big thing that probably is not something you should fight against, a man that tries to just bite you, and something with big <laughs> movements and a big tail that does big AOE. And here's the thing, I might put them all into one thing, I might split them up, and you're <laughs> not gonna know which is which <laughs> until it starts doing it, and then you're gonna go into a false sense of Security, you're gonna be like, oh my god, he put them all in one. He put them all in the same thing. A he giant a huge rat humanoid in. man who <laughs> bites in a big AoE. And then Weird. it turns out it's just all across the board. Ah! He's kind of hungry. <laughs> I'm so pumped. I'm so excited. Shh, don't worry, this is fine. <laughs> now, are there any other questions that you party members have? for me before we take our well i guess before we wrap up we've basically been going for two hours oh my gosh um also i am going to give the bosses different phases because i want oh, to watch the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. naturally naturally as you should can't wait to yeah. die do you, do you have any questions do you have anything that you really want to see in this game um, the I, underwater I'll, fighting mechanics, those sounded cool. Yeah, that, that sounds that really sound fun. Interesting. Why would you want that? <laughs> it just sounds fun. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I don't want it. I'm a pyromancer. So that doesn't sound like it would work. Oh. Look, <laughs> I will. Yeah, actually, I'll, that sounds awful. I, no, it's fine. I, look, I, I, I'll, I'll, I will make you fight a dragon with tentacles underwater. Thank okay. you. Yeah, Bravo. Bravo, we gotta have a conversation later. Bravo, we gotta have a conversation later. It's gonna I'm be sure one this... horror after another, and I'm gonna be like, I love it. <laughs> You're gonna have a full sketchbook by the end of this. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just a little guy. That's my brand. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you all want cutscenes? <gasps> yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. yeah. With that okay. voice changer that you have? Hell oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I have, I have, uh, and I have an entire soundboard. I have the Estes flask. Yeah. I have the you died sound. Um, mm -hmm. I have a couple of different audio clips, and I have. Uh, a few bits of royalty-free music that I can play for your cutscenes. Yay! And 
Ooh. it's gonna get weird. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Very excited. Um, I have a question for you, Gabe. Yeah, shoot. Oh. Um, if I would, uh, if I could, um, how much, how much character like backstory do you want us to provide? Because I mean, I know me. I'm the type of girl that likes to go all out when it comes. Oh. to Oh. I'm gonna be honest. It probably won't matter here. Um, <laughs> I, I only say that because that that is that is part of the Dark Souls narrative. That right. your, your character mm -hmm. has a very little understanding of who they are. Uh -huh. um, Dark Souls games are infamous for you learn story through subtext and experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to have a bunch of backstory that inspires where the character comes from, I am here for it. If you have uh little things that you want to relate to your character i can probably throw some things in there um i am going to be honest i'm going to catch 22 the hell out of you all on what is and isn't lore um okay. and i'm what i'm also going to do is uh, i have no doubt so y'all in chat y'all are going to be the worst i have no clue i have no doubt that you're going to be the worst because i'm going to say something and the entire party is going to be focused on like tentacle cthulhu over there and i'll have said like and the old figure that you saw two days ago blah 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 is actually is there's a and they're gonna focus on like oh my god it's a monster and someone's gonna chat's gonna be like yo he said that old man though and that old man said he really loved fishing for octopus so like where's he at they gotta go back so y'all watching are gonna be the worst uh but i will absolutely throw in little hints to things to the story because that is often what dark souls does you'll talk to a character they'll mention something they'll mention an item they'll mention bringing back an item i will absolutely you can fight you can choose to fight anyone you come across. This is like Dark Souls, where you could just, you can just, you can swing at the Grave Taker if you want to. No. How dare um, you? If the Grave Keeper I'm starts talking, can I just hit X to skip? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You hear his keyboard smashing in the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think, I think that's actually pretty much everything then. Unless there are any more questions. I am excited for us to get into this adventure. Uh, so next week, we will probably have the character sheets more wrapped up. We will go over some of the example roles. You might get into a little bit of like a, the instance of what this encounter is going to be like. We're going to be doing some world building roles using some of the charts inside the game, using some of the narrative. And we're going to build what the challenge outside of I drank too much tea and it made me burp. We're going to get into what the challenge outside of this tomb is, as all of you are actually going to help me using some of the references from this book to build out what this campaign is going to look like. <gasps> oh, how exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you all for joining us. We're going to go around once more. This outfit is making me feel like Jack Sparrow, and now I'm doing the I hands. I was thinking it. Uh huh. Yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> Savvy. <laughs> so, first, please introduce you one more time, EJ. Hi, everyone. My name is EJ. I'm that's one big egg in chat. I'm several big eggs on Twitter. Um, and though I don't have my own Twitch channel, you can find me Friday nights at Stella Luna's channel. You can also find me. On Cassie's channel sometimes at the Monty Hall. Is your name actually like several big eggs on Twitter? Mm-hmm. Just several big eggs. We're gonna talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Eric. Hi. Uh you can find me uh all over the internet, mostly Eric, on all the social medias and whatnot. And uh yeah, you can c catch up on episodes of New Pantheon Academia here on uh, on Saving Throw, and this the second half of this last season will come. Not the last season, but this current season comes back on May first, I Yay! believe. That's exciting. I'm excited. Hell yeah! So then, I just like watching Bravo make the eyes. I was gonna see how long it was gonna happen. <laughs> Bravo! Hi guys, I'm Bravo. 
Um, I've been the Monty Hall in chat. Um, you can find me there as well as over at Still Luna's channel with EJ. Um, uh, every Friday for Unbound, I play a very tall, buff, lesbian uh, paladin, and she's the best. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm all over the internets with uh, as uh, Bravo with five R's. Um, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, everything. Oh, yeah. And then Drac. Hi, I'm Drac or Draconics. You can find me on Twitter at Draconics. That's D-R-A-K-O-N-I-Q-U-E-S. Um, I kind of stream all over the place. So honestly, just follow me on Twitter would probably be the best place to find out what I'm doing at any given moment. Um, but I think one thing that's out of ordinary is I'm going to be guessing over on Trooper um, SG's channel tomorrow, I think it is. Um, we're playing a game of... Uh, essentially, I'm going to be in like uh, uh, France in game I'm, I'm part of resistance against the nazis so i get to punch nazis so if you want to watch that happen come watch. oh <laughs> yeah it's always a good time hi i'm gabe <laughs> gabe hicks gabe james games i don't know you can find me uh across the internet at those names um twitter Instagram, technically, don't go to TikTok. TikTok is a bad place. Um, well, now <laughs> we're gonna go to TikTok. <laughs> I am so sorry for your loss. Uh, I am creative producer at Roll Twenty. I have worked on Pathfinder, Starfinder. Uh, you can find me on Tuesdays on that Bronze Girls channel, um, as well as doing a bunch of other nonsense in the internet. So check Twitter for that information. Um, and for those of you who have played the Dark Souls games, there will be some Easter eggs in this campaign as well. Some familiar characters. I have no doubt that they are going to try to fight some of them. Um, like the Onion Knight, for example. If any <gasps> of you know. I'm yeah. going to scream! My boy! Oh, the baby! The big yeah, I'm going to fight him. I'm going to fight no, him. No, we got yeah. to befriend oh, him so he can come fight no, the, the yeah. boss. I'm, so I'm, I'm Patch's older brother. Okay? I'm very I excited. I'm very excited. I can't wait to hear Gabe go, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> but I never said it was going to be the same one. Maybe it's just someone wearing his armor. That is all the time we have today. We will see you same time next week where these characters and players are going to go into situations thinking they know what's going to happen because they recognize an Easter egg and Gabe changed it because I make the rules here. Oh God. I will see you next time. Unkindled. Take care.